Hi, I'm Harriet Rice and I'm an arts advocate and I believe in creative expression for all. That's why I'm involved in this project and why I had the vision for this project to get the community involved in a project that they could take pride in and have hands-on participation. I'm Mike Hornman, community development agent with the University of Wisconsin Extension, Burnett County. And I work with local governments, community organizations, economic development organizations, and growing the Burnett County community. This project uh, really came about when I was approached by a community member, Don Chell, uh, chairman of the Whitetails Unlimited Burnett County chapter. Uh, he came up to me and said, Mike, you know, it's 100 years of the Jordan Buck. Uh, you work with tourism, uh, we need to do something. And from there, off it went. The Jordan Buck was a United States record whitetail buck that was shot just south of Danbury on November 20th, 1914 by Danbury resident Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan went out hunting just south of Danbury along the railroad tracks. A train came through in those days there was a train that ran from St. Paul all the way up to Superior. So Jim heard the whistle blowing which scared up a whole bunch of deer that were bedded down near the railroad tracks. And among those does was a buck with a huge rack. James Jordan and Ekus Davis walked down the trail and into the woods and, and did most of the hunt paralleling uh, the Sioux Line Railroad and eventually bagged the buck um, on the banks of the Yellow River, which the railroad uh, goes over um, a quarter mile south of Danbury. There's a, quite a long backstory that goes along with this because Jim Jordan gave the mount to a Webster taxidermist who was supposed to mount it for him for $5. But unfortunately, um, the Webster taxidermist um, left the area. And that was the last that Jim Jordan ever saw of his mount for 40 years, until a relative found it in a secondhand store in Sandstone, Minnesota. And he brought them back to Jim Jordan, who looked at them and he said, that's my deer. So he put them up in his bar and he told great tales about it. But Robert Ludwig had the foresight to measure the antlers using a Boone and Crockett score sheet. Boone and Crockett is the official organization that measures antlers on uh, trophy deer. And it turned out that this deer was 206 and an eighth points, which was a USA record and at the time a world record. What makes the Jordan Buck stand out is the mass. Um, the main beams, which runs up from the top of the head out to the main point, that main beam is 30 inches long. To give you some perspective on that, a tennis racket, a standard regulation tennis racket that people will use, that's 27 and a half inches. So the, the, each main beam is longer than a tennis racket. The Jordan's Bucks spread is actually on the small side compared to um, other large bucks, uh, record bucks, uh, but still that outside spread is almost 24 inches wide. That's essentially two regular standards, regulation standard basketballs side by side. So that's about, it's that wide to the outside edge of the antlers. And probably what's most impressive is the circumference of the main beam, and that gets back to the mass. Each tine is very ma massive, uh, large circumferences, but the most impressive one is on the, on the left main beam. And um, to put it in the context, a soda pop can is eight inches in circumference. Uh, the James Jordan's Buck widest circumference on the left main beam is seven and six eighths inches. So it's almost the same circumference as a soda pop can. I, I'm a great fan of theater. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be kind of neat if we built a buck like that? A, 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 an oversized buck with people in it to animate it? And everybody could help build it. But I had a problem. <laughs> who was I gonna find who could help do this? Who was an artist who could help build this, this kind of kinetic sculpture? His name is Christopher Lutter Gardella, and he is a theater artist who builds oversized animals and creatures for the theater. I build uh, special effects for theater productions. Um, I do a lot of puppets and animated works. Actually, I, I didn't even start as a professional commission artist. I really started as a community artist. So really, I got into the arts initially as like a mode of social 
change and a mo mode of social engagement. I got a call from Harriet and she uh, had gotten word that I was capable of um, designing a project. So she came to me with that request. I said, sure, I can design that for you. And my thought was like, wow, this is, this is local legend, you know, that we're um, kind of lifting up and elucidating and dramatizing and um, it's not unlike the types of art projects you could see around the world. From there it just kind of took off um, and here I am. I had made acquaintance with um, the staff at Northwest Passage which is a residential treatment facility for at-risk youth. They have a gallery, In a New Light Gallery, which showcases the photography work of the youth who participate in an art, artistic expressive program that features photography that is also therapeutic as well as educational. So we partnered to do this, and not only would they provide a site, but it would provide a new artistic expressive experience for the youth who could come in and work on this project, which they did, and they did a fabulous job. When we came here for the site visit and I saw the place and you know talked to Ben and some others about like the mission of the organization, I was just like, I, I mean, it put a big smile on my face and really got me excited about the project. You know, the moment I stepped into you know, the Northwest Passage gallery space and kind of saw the pho photographic work that the kids were working on, I just, I was like, this is, really exciting. So that connection was really key for me and really kind of brought the soulfulness of it and stuff. And I, I said to Harry, I said, that's our, that's our main connection is like, because we're being hosted in their space and we have an opportunity to engage these young people into this project. I thought that's what this is all about. One of the features of this animal is it's big enough so that people can stand inside it and it can be animated from inside. So it's very light. Their legs will be the legs of the deer and it will actually walk and actually come to life. And there's quite a wow factor with it. As people probably recognize when I, the first day I came here and unloaded a bunch of junk, you know, that I have unusual materials that I use to build these things. I'm a conservationist and um, as in resource conservation and uh, I'm a junk collector. I'm a materials kind of fanatic. Um, I've always, from the beginning of building things like this, have been interested in uh, waste materials, but also just the fascination, the pure fascination in like what materials can do and what you can, and design-wise, like what cardboard can accomplish or coaxial cable can accomplish or what this plastic, when it's wadded up and twisted and wrapped with tape, what kind of forms it can make. Part of the mission of the work is to uh, help people to appreciate you know, resource and materials and like the, cap the possibilities of repurposing things into uh, artistic things and to value resources more deeply. So I'm hoping that that's being accomplished. Um, what's neat about this now, we've, we've established the Jordan Buck Heritage Hike and that's an opportunity for people to relive the legendary hunt because now that railroad track is a hiking biking trail and uh, and so people, that 1.3 miles section of, of trail where the hunt occurred is uh, people can uh, take a self-guided walking tour with a map and relive um, that legendary hunt on November 20th, 2014. Yeah, I can't think about just building a thing, you know, just building things is really boring, you know, but building a thing that is gonna get performed and like, you know, is gonna be animated and is gonna thrill people with how it moves and is gonna be part of a larger narrative because the whole idea is to bring it to life and to excite people through animation. We're a county, we live and breathe wildlife. It's part of our lives. This kinetic sculpture will be a way to uh, continue to let people know what Burnett County is about and communicate our image as a, as a, a county about wildlife. And if, if you enjoy wildlife, come to Burnett County. It's a pleasure and an honor to be invited into the Burnett County community and to meet these fantastic kids that course through this amazing organization called Northwest Passage and to meet these um, retirees that live around here and some non-retirees, some working folks have been coming by, like actually after a long day work, you know, coming by because it's meaningful to them and they feel good about being able to contribute to it and they're hunters and, you know, they're really into the project. So just 
being able to engage with all these different types of people. I mean, I'm, I'm a lucky guy. You know, I can come into these areas and like really engage um, with people on this level. So it's an honor to be here. Up in Burnett County where the land is fair Wild animals wander around everywhere They say it's hunter's heaven and I know it's true They come from Minneapolis and Baraboo Listen to my story and you'll see what I mean It happened way back in 1914 Jim Jordan was out on the Gandy Dancer Trail When he caught sight of a big white tail Up it jumped when the train whistle blew He took his aim and he shot it through Well wouldn't you know it was just his luck He got himself a world record breaking buck It was the Jordan Buck, the Jordan Buck You probably couldn't fit it in a pickup truck Walking through the woods he really had the duck He was a mighty big deer, he was the Jordan Buck He was the Jordan Buck the Jordan Buck, you probably couldn't fit him in a pickup truck. Walking through the woods, he really had the duck. He was a mighty big deer, he was the Jordan Buck. Five years later, the mount was found in a second-hand store up in Sandstone Town. Boone and Crockett came out to Bob Ludwig's home. They measured that rack, and wouldn't you know, 206 and an eighth was the score. No other deer rack in the world had more. He was the Jordan Buck, the Jordan Buck. You probably couldn't fit it in a pickup truck. Walking through the woods, he really had the duck. He was a mighty big deer. He was the Jordan Buck. He was the Jordan Buck, the Jordan Buck. You probably couldn't fit it in a pickup truck Walking through the woods, he really had the duck He was a mighty big deer, he was a Jordan Buck Five years later, the mount was found in a second-hand store up in Sandstone Town. Boone and Crockett came out to Bob Ludwig's home. They measured that rack, and wouldn't you know, 206 and an eighth was the score. No other deer rack in the world had more. He was the Jordan Buck, the Jordan Buck. You probably couldn't fit it in a pickup truck. Walking through the woods, he really had the duck. He was a mighty big deer. He was the Jordan Buck. He was the Jordan Buck, the Jordan Buck. You probably couldn't fit it in a pickup truck. Walking through the woods, he really had the duck. He was a mighty big deer. He was a Jordan Buck.